So now we're going to continue to talk about the properties of exponential functions. All right, so now I want us to look at what happens whenever we start to increase the value of x in this function. Now remember, the more we increase x, our function is going to begin to approach the asymptote. So the asymptote is a value that we approach when x becomes large and y is getting very, very close to the value of the asymptote. So we're going to go ahead and fill in this chart and see what happens as we start to increase the value of x. We want to see what's going to happen to y and what value it's going to approach. So as you can see, as we start to make x very large, we begin to approach this value, 2.7182, and then the back numbers seem to keep increasing. Now I wonder if we will ever be larger than this number. So you can go ahead and plug in even larger values for x to see for yourself but it seems like we're going to hover around this number here. The value of the asymptote of the function we were just looking at is actually approaching the number e. Now e, just like pi, is a symbolic notation for an irrational number. All right, So if you go ahead and press e in your calculator, you'll see that it will give you this value. Now e is used to describe continuous growth, so growth that is happening continuously as time passes. So you can see this is the graph of the function we were just looking at, and the asymptote it is approaching is y equals e. So we're going to be looking at how we can use e to calculate continuous compounded interest. So we call functions that have e as its base natural base exponential functions. Now we use this to describe continuous growth or decay, so growth that is continuously happening as time is passing. Now you can go ahead and pick up your calculator, find the E button, and then I want you to fill in this chart for all the values of E. Now when you pick up your calculator and press the E button, it should automatically give you a little caret and it wants you to input some value up here in the exponent. Now we looked at this function to describe exponential behavior whenever we're talking about rate of growth after a specific time period. So A represented our initial value, R was our rate, T was our time interval, and A of T was what we achieved after that time interval. Now this formula can be used whenever I have annual, quarterly, or monthly growth. But wouldn't we rather our money grow continuously? Whenever something is continuously compounded, we use this formula instead of the formula on the last slide. So whenever something is continuously growing, we use PERT. So we refer to this as PERT because it's P times E, and then our exponent up here is RT. So R is our interest rate, our annual interest rate, so R is usually in years. T is our time in years, and our principal amount, principal means your starting amount or your initial amount, and A of T is the amount in the account after time T passes. Suppose you won a contest at the start of your ninth grade year that deposited $3,000 into an account that is going to pay 5% annual interest compounded continuously. How much will you have in that account when you enter college four years later? So first of all, the reason why I know I'm going to use this particular formula is because of these words right here. So if I was not told compounded continuously, I could not use PERT, okay? So you can only use PERT whenever you are compounded continuously. All right, so let's list the information I know. I know my principal amount, it's $3,000. That's what I'm starting with in the account. I know my rate, it's 5%. Well, 5% is 0 0.05. And I know that my time frame is going to be four years. So let's go ahead and find A of 4, principal is 3,000, E, my rate up here is 0 0.05 times my time. Now, remember, we never round in the middle of a problem. So you should never be figuring out what this is, writing it down, then multiplying by 3,000. All of this should happen in your calculator at one time. Now I still want you to show your work, so you need to be showing me all of these components, but when I go and pick up my calculator, 
I need to do e to the 0 0.05 times 4 power. You're going to get a decimal that's about 1.22140275 but I'm going to leave it in my calculator and now I'm going to multiply by 3000. Now this way I'm absolutely not rounding until the very end. So now this is the decimal that I'm going to be looking at. And now we can go ahead and round to the nearest cent. So I'm going to have approximately this much money in my account after the four years have passed whenever I start college. Now you can look at the initial amount here, 3000 and see that we've earned $664.21 of interest. Alright, so give this a go and write your work and your answer in your notes.